Around a year ago, I released a work in progress video for my Wii Party All Minigames Play Around task, which featured the Jumbo Jump minigame among others. In this, I gave players the easy aim of jumping the furthest distance possible by swinging the Wiimote at the last possible moment. As such, one would expect that they would achieve the maximum high score possible in the minigame. However, in contrast to this, player 3 only achieves a high score of 447 meters, whereas the high score by far the most prominently featured on online leaderboards is 449 meters, or feet, in American copies of the game. In order to fully understand why player 3 was limited to such a high score, as well as what makes 449 meters achievable in the first place, we need to take a closer look at the intricate mechanics behind Jumbo Jump, as well as the differences that exist across different versions of the game. There is a 0.2 second time frame during which the player is able to swing the Wiimote in order to successfully jump. As the game is running at 60 frames a second in this case, there are 12 unique points at which the player can jump, each of which results in a different distance from the ski jump. If you've played the minigame yourself, however, you may notice that far more distances can be achieved in practice than those shown on screen. In order to diagnose the factor at play here, we will set up a situation in which all four players jump from the ramp at the same time. To definitively rule out other factors that could potentially be at play, all inputs leading up to the jump from the ramp and following the ramp itself will be identical across players. Despite all players exhibiting identical performance in the minigame, they still ended up achieving different distances. As it turns out, variance in distance between players is partially dependent on luck. At the beginning of the minigame, the global RNG function is called to select which players will have a stronger advantage over others. Upon jumping from the ramp, a few meters are added to the player's distance depending on what placement they were assigned by the random number generator. Thus, not only does one have to be frame perfect in jumping from the ramp to achieve a high score of 449 meters, but they also need to be granted the highest amount of advantage over other players, and so in that sense, Jumbo Jump is not a truly skill-based game. Given the low number of moments that it's possible for one to jump in the minigame, it's likely that this fact was introduced in order to reduce the likelihood of draws between players. As a result, there are actually 40 unique distances that can be achieved in Jumbo Jump, although only 12 can be achieved in any given game. While it is still possible for two players of differing privilege to tie in situations where they jump from the ramp at different points, the phenomenon is overall far less likely to occur. There's still one piece of the puzzle missing, however. While the arguments presented may make sense in the context of the American release of the game, online leaderboards also suggest that a score of 464 meters should be possible on PAL versions of the game. What is it that prevents such a score from being achievable in this case? As it turns out, the answer boils down to a question of 50 hertz versus 60 hertz mode. Due to differing standards regarding what frame rate and resolution televisions should run at, European countries and Australia have traditionally had display monitors with a refresh rate of 50Hz, whereas other countries such as the United States and Japan have traditionally had a refresh rate of 60Hz. However, in the last two decades, televisions have gradually switched over to the 60fps standard, and as such game consoles began to provide options to play in 60fps rather than 50fps. By the time the Wii released, 50Hz had mostly been phased out across European countries, however some games continued to allow 50Hz modes, and Wii Party was one such game. Curiously, although Australian consoles had the same support for 50Hz modes as their European counterparts, the Australian version was released without such support, despite the disc being identical to the European version in every other regard. However, without any prior modification to the code, 50Hz versions of games will usually run around 17% slower than their 60Hz counterparts. 
This is because most games run codes relating to how far a given character or object needs to move every time a new frame is drawn to the screen, and as a result, gameplay in 50Hz only moves forward at about 5 6 of the speed that it does in 60Hz mode. In order to counter this issue, many game developers implement special cases in their code that increase the speed at which objects move at 50Hz to compensate for the issue, so that gameplay moves at roughly the same speed in both 50Hz and 60Hz modes. Often these adjustments aren't perfect, however, and We Party is no exception. The speed at which players fly off the ramp is increased slightly more for 50Hz than the speed at which they fall, and as such, the range of distances that the player can reach, as well as the distances that they can achieve, are different. Even assuming adjustments were made perfectly, though, there would likely be at least some deviation between versions. Although a player in a properly compensated 50Hz mode will reach the same distance as its 60Hz counterpart every 100 milliseconds, the positions that that object will end up at along the way will be different. Thus, in a game mode where the position one reaches before pressing A is used to determine the distance they'll achieve, deviation in high scores is almost guaranteed. 